Adventures of the Saint, starring Vincent Price. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charter and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... The Saint. And then it comes in and goes out and comes in. Well, why should that happen all the time? Well, perhaps the author has a lot of relatives. You still don't understand. Is there anything to understand? For some reason or other, the book happens to be popular. And, well, there's no real problem. Oh, but there is. You see, the people who've been taking that book out all the time, well, they're the same people. <laughs> It is, Mr. Templer. Well, uh, stop right here, Louis. Okay, Mr. Temple. Want I should wait, Mr. Templer? Mm, I want you should wait, Louis. I'll wait. Mr. Templer. Yes, May? You're not speaking to me. I'm trying to invent a good reason why I'm going to your bookstore with you. Oh? May, could I seriously tell anyone I'm going to a bookstore at this hour of the night in order to look at a book called The Birds and Bees of East Orange? Sure you could. Yeah, but they wouldn't believe me, just as I don't but believe... But this is my place. Oh. Huh. Nice. It's small, but... The books get in all right. Well, that's convenient. Just a minute till I put the lights on. There. I'd better shut the door before in, any uh, midnight browsers come around. Hmm? <laughs> Now, uh... The birds and bees of East Orange? Yes. Well, it, it came in just before I shut up shop. It's on reserve, though, of course. Of course. So I left it behind the counter. Well, who reserved it? One of the people who've been taking it out regularly. Uh, it should be down here. May. <gasps> oh, don't faint. I've got a rush. No, no. no what is it? The, the man down here behind the counter. Get out of there and let me take a look at him. Oh, all right. Uh, 
ordinary kitchen knife buried in his chest. He hasn't been dead very long. The body's still warm. May, who is he? I never saw him before. You sure? Of course I am. He, he, he doesn't even look like the kind of man who ever read a book. I'm not so sure of that. Where is the birds and the bees book, huh? I left it on the shelf right here. I don't understand. I, I left it here. It's on reserve. Mm, the reservation's been canceled. Mr. Bieber will be terribly angry. Mr. Bieber being the man who had the reservation? That's right. You have a file card for him? Uh-huh. I'd like to see it. It's back in this drawer. Keep all the rental library customers' cards in a box. Well, what is it? File cards. They're all gone. Well, that helps. May, would you happen to remember Mr. Bieber's address? Yes, I do, because... It's a hotel, which is easy. Oh, thank heaven, something is easy. Which hotel? The Bolivar. Good. Now, you said the same people kept on taking the East Orange book out all the time, huh? Uh-huh. The same three people. Who were they? Well, Mr. Bieber, of course. Yes. And then there's a, there's a girl named Wendy Willikins. You know, that name sounds funny. Yes, it does. Uh, the other one's funny, too. It's Peter Piper. Peter Piper? Uh-huh. It shouldn't be hard finding someone named Peter Piper. No, not if it happens to be his real name. However, we do have Mr. Bieber and an address. Yeah, plus a cost. I don't know his name. He never took a book out. What are you doing? Yeah, maybe this gentleman never took a book out, but luckily he did take out a driver's license. Oh, his wallet. Yeah, yeah, his name is Dugan, James Dugan, and his occupation... Is that on his license, too? No, no. These, however, were in his vest pocket. Those? Yep. Uh, they're dice, aren't they? Yes, professional-style dice. In a handsome leather case. Therefore, occupation gambler, hmm? Gosh, you figured that out pretty quickly. I think we'd better phone the police and tell them Mr. Dugan, gambler, has cast his last die. <laughs> Joe, be sure to get a picture of the counter. Yeah. Barney, yeah. get some of that back door, huh? Harry, yeah. right, you cover that table, will you? Yes, Lieutenant. Oh, uh, Sampler. Yes, Lieutenant Manelli. Give. I just did. Huh? On March 15th. Oh, yeah. Say, Sampler, you and the girl found a stiff by accident, huh? Yes, of course. He's a total stranger to both of us. Yes, so the girl said. There were jimmy marks on the outside door. Stiff was carrying a jimmy. Are you deducing, Lieutenant? Fooey. He broke into the place. Why? Mm, he had a fire, but no good book to curl up with. Goodbye, Mr. Templer. You want me and me to leave? I want you to leave. Oh, but... Uh... Oh, I'll be all right, Mr. Templer. The lieutenant's very nice. Don't be silly. Actually, he's known as Manelli the Monster, the horror of headquarters. Hey, lieutenant! Uh, uh, excuse me. Yeah, what is it? Don't let his polished manners deceive you. Me. You're not telling him about the birds and the bees. No. I'm not sure if they're... I'm leaving now by request. Where are you going? To see a man about a book. Good evening. I'd like to see Mr. Bieber. Well, what do you know? And I know you're not Mr. Bieber. Mr. Bieber wouldn't use perfume. Uh, may I come in? I hate to lurk in hotel corridors. Mm-hmm. You may come in. Thank you. Is your husband here? I'm not married. Sorry? I haven't had time to think about it. All right. Think about it. Hmm. If you're under the impression that you're helping my mental process... Uh, I'm not. Uh, well, my name is Simon Templer. Hello, Simon. I'm Wendy. Wendy Willikins? Well, how clever of you to guess. I wasn't guessing. Oh, have you, um, read any good books lately? Oh, oh, darling, you're the first man in ten years to ask me that. Well, maybe, but I meant it. Well, the answer is no. And most of the men I meet haven't read any good books lately either. You see, they The prefer... book I had in mind was The Birds and Bees of East Orange. Oh. Well, are they any different from The Birds and Bees anyplace else? I wouldn't think so. Then, Simon, tell me about yourself. My biography is long and dull. Uh, I don't want a biography. I just want to know what you're doing here. Trying to find out if you've read a book. No. 
You were expecting Beaver to be here. Therefore... You uh, point guns at anybody who expects Beaver to be here, hmm? Wendy, you should have uh, stuck to your other weapons. That revolver doesn't frighten me. It should? It would if someone else weren't already pointing a revolver at you. I don't believe you that. You should. <gasps> Peter. I don't like to see girls play with guns, even big girls. Drop it, Wendy. Oh, I hate you. You needn't bother eyeing that gun, Mr. Temper. I'll take it. Seems unfair. You already have one. I am unfair. I'll tell you a secret, Mr. Templer. I'm a nasty character. I believe you. Thanks. Wendy, where's Bieber? I don't know. I was waiting for him. You know, you shouldn't have come to his hotel. Neither should you. True enough. Nevertheless... Mr. Piper, have you read The Birds and Bees of East Orange recently? Don't try to startle me again, Templer. My finger might accidentally pull the trigger. Well, I wasn't testing your nerves. It was your reading matter. Shut up. Wendy, where does he come in? I don't know. Would you like to try that again? I really don't know. We... You'd better not slap her again, Piper. Why not? Because then I'd have to take your revolver away. You wouldn't make it. Perhaps not. She'd make so much noise shooting me, I'd bleed and bleed. Then and... stay where you are and mind your own business. I'd prefer to, but I can't stand seeing women slapped. Probably a childhood fixation or something. You'll but... have to stand it. Wendy. <laughs> don't. I warned you, Piper. Another step, Templar, and you get it. Believe me, I don't want All it. All right, but then I... I... I suffer from defective vision. I can't see through wooden doors. Mr. Templer! Uh, Mr. Templer? Answer him. Uh, uh, yes, what is it? Uh, cops are on their way, coming up the stairs right now. Oh, thank you. All right, this one's yours, Templer. But there'll be another time. Uh, Mr. Piper must have a fixation about policemen or something. Well, I, I think I'll go out the back door, too, Simon. Oh, same fixation? No, but my mother warned me against men in uniform. Goodbye, Simon. Hmm. Mr. Temple? Hey, you can come in now, Louie. Worked, huh? Yeah, well, bless your raucous little voice, Louie. It worked. <laughs> there aren't any policemen really on the way, are there? No, no. Only after what I've seen through the keyhole. It isn't polite to look through keyholes. You're complaining? No, but... Oh, uh... Don't worry. I knew you wasn't alone with the blonde. i seen the little guy sneak in. <laughs> Mr. Templer, who is this uh, Mr. Bieber you're looking for anyways? A constant reader of the birds and bees of East Orange. Uh-huh. And the blonde? The same. And, uh, and the little guy with the gun? Also a constant reader. That book must have something. Undoubtedly. <laughs> but what? Come on, Louis. Yeah, okay. Look, Mr. Templer. Did you uh, read that book? No, no. Oh. May's copy was out. Mr. Templer, I'll tell you something. In Brooklyn... Yes, Louis? We didn't learn about the birds and the bees from a book. Well, East Orange apparently isn't Brooklyn, Louis. East Orange must be awful dull. Well, where to, Mr. Templer? Home, Louis. I'm expecting company. Uh, come on in, Louis, and... Hello. Hey. Oh, Good evening. This is the company you was expecting, Mr. Templer? It was a possibility I'd considered. Who is he? He would be Mr. Bieber, I should imagine. He is. He's also got a gun. He has? Now then. The answer is no. You're quite sure? Quite sure. I've already searched your apartment, of course. Mm, I'm sure you have. However, you may be a better hider than I am a finder. I'm a terrible hider. That might possibly be modesty. Not really. Mr. Bieber, if you'd stayed in your hotel room... You would have been spared the trip here. Indeed? Yes, I've just returned from the hotel. What a pity. Of course, your friends were there. Friends? Yes, Wendy and Peter Piper. Nonsense. I know no one by either of those names. Oh, my, uh... However, I think I'll run along now, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. You're holding the gun. So I am, to be sure. Um, good evening. Good evening. Hmm. A very polite type, only he points. With a gun yet. Mm. Louis, I've got to stay here. In case of further visits, but uh, will you... Uh, Mr. Templer, I'm tired, I'm sleepy, my, my arches just fell. Look, I need a copy of the book, The Birds and Bees of East Orange. Nobody needs a copy of a book like that. It's late. You may have trouble locating a copy, but if you can get hold of May Owen and... Of May Owen? I'm on my way. But, Louis, you're tired. Who says? You're sleepy. Did Edison sleep? Your arches fell. I'll pick him up on my way out. So long. <laughs> oh, one thing, Louis. Yeah? One man's already been killed because of that book. Be careful. Don't add another chapter to it. Hmm? 
Mr. Templer, you should hear the kind of language a bookseller uses when you wake him in the middle of the night to ask him about the birds and the bees. <laughs> Very educated language, too. I'm sorry. Full of synonyms. Uh, did you did you have any visitors? No, no. Uh-huh. You were gone a couple of hours. I'm worried. Well, anyway, we got a copy of that book. Here. Mm, thank you, Louis. I could continue waiting, but... Um... But you ain't the patient type, huh? Mm, no, Louis. Yeah. Well... No one's been shot for at least uh, a couple hours. I don't like murderers, Louis, that kill people. Yeah, I never thought of it like that before. Well. Hotel Bolivar. Good evening. Oh, Mr. Bieber, please. One minute, sir. Thank you. I'll hold on. Bieber? But that's the guy who was here. Yes, I know. Oh, he also will use very educated language on being waked up. Yes? Mr. Bieber, this is Simon Templer. Yes, Mr. Templer. I know it's late, but, uh... Mr. Bieber, I have a book lying on my table. Oh? The title of it is The Birds and Bees of East Orange. How did you get it? That isn't important. I just thought you'd be interested. I'll be right over. Wait for me. Of course. Goodbye. You bought him another copy? Louis, he's on his way over here, therefore... Yeah, therefore what? Therefore, suppose we get started on our way. Oh, sure, sure. On our way to where? His hotel. <laughs> Well, it's a nice lobby, but Mr. Templer Bieber ain't going to be in. No, perhaps not. Uh, uh, yes, sir? We'd like to see Mr. Bieber, please. Mr. Bieber? Mm hmm. Well, Mr. Bieber is out. You sure? Yes, sir. I saw him go. Oh, thank you. Come on, Louie. Fine. You tell Bieber you got a book for him, he rushes to your apartment, but before he gets there, you take the book, you go to his hotel to find out what you already knew. Mm hmm. Yes, sir, that's true, Louie. What, I'm not supposed to understand? Louie, get in your cab. I'm going to take a walk. What's the matter? Something suddenly went wrong with the cab? No, but I want to see how many steps I can take before someone picks me up, me and the book. Oh. Go on, Louie. Okay, but my inferiority complex is growing like anything. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Simon, darling. Eight steps. Mm-hmm. What? But Wendy... <laughs> You're not the one. Uh, I'm not what one? The one I expected to... Oh, never mind. Louie! Louie! Let's have a cab! Simon Tebler, what do you mean by grabbing me, throwing me into a cab, and then refusing to talk to me? Why were you watching outside the hotel? I, I wasn't. And you still haven't explained. Wendy, I can't. Why not? Because, because your perfume is so strong, so... Oh, you're lying. Oh, very well. And because I'm afraid that we're rushing towards mm -hmm. death. Hey, your door was open, Mr. Temple. Yes. Wow. Your apartment's very nice, Simon. Thank you, but uh, he isn't. <gasps> hmm? Well, well, well. It's Mr. Bieber. He's grinning at us. Grinning? Mm, not exactly, Wendy. Mr. Templer, he... Yes, shot. Oh. And dead. Very dead. Simon, we didn't do anything about Mr. Bieber. Well, what would you suggest? Artificial respiration? Well, I mean, you, you, you didn't notify the police or... <laughs> Mr. Bieber can wait. He has all eternity to wait in. Yeah, this I understand, but why are we going to the bookstore? I don't know. Let's say to see if it's open or shut, huh? I don't want to go there. I don't want to go any place except home. Not quite yet, Wendy. I think it's time we cleared up a few things. I don't understand. <laughs> Your part in this entire business, the business itself, is about as subtle as the way you use perfume. But I... Wendy, you, Bieber, and Piper were involved in something illegal. Something that was regular and had continuity. The fact that the dead man in the bookstore, Dugan, was a gambler indicates... I refuse that, to listen to you. ...that the three of you were engaged in gambling, a, a betting ring, say. Hmm? <laughs> no answer? 
Well, that's answer enough. Since your activities were illegal and since the police have been actively engaged in breaking up such rings, you had to take steps to avoid being seen together, suspected together, convicted together. You're making all this up. Yeah, you distrusted even the telephone since phone wires have been tapped rather frequently of late. Therefore, one of you struck on the circulating library idea. Yeah, messages could be conveyed by means of a book agreed upon in advance. A book and a... a code. That book was the birds and bees of East Orange. You could be sure no one else would be especially interested in a book of that kind. Simon, you're... you're... Yes? Uh, quite right. The messages dealt mainly with, um... Payoffs. Hmm. Bieber had reserved the book. Therefore, he was innocent of Dugan's murder. Dugan, who had tumbled to the setup and thought of cutting himself in, is that right? Mm, I guess so, Simon. Uh, Mr. Templer, bookstore's closed. Uh, small, no one would be hiding there. Wendy, mm? who brought in the book for Bieber to pick up? You or Piper? Uh, I don't want to tell you. Oh, don't be an idiot. I know the answer. It confirms your innocence so far as Dugan's murder goes. Does it? Well, I brought the book in. In that case, you know where the money for the payoff is, huh? Where? Well, we had several places, but this one's a rented room. Give Louis the address, huh? Maybe we won't be late again. Maybe we won't find another corpse grinning at us. Simon. You don't think I killed anyone, do you? No, Wendy. Well, is it because of chivalry or something? No. I'll tell you about it some rainy night. <laughs> Although I'll keep in close touch with the weatherman. But, Simon, Bieber's dead and so is Dugan. That leaves only Piper. So why are you afraid of another murder? There isn't anyone left to kill. You're forgetting May Owen, aren't you? Was well, it the girl who owns the bookstore? Oh, she had nothing to do with... Only an idiot could have failed to notice the fact that an obscure book was being regularly taken out by the same three people. They noticed. She must have put in a lot of study on that book. You mean she figured out what it was all about Well, this is the place, Mr. Templer. Oh, good. You come along with us, Louie. Sure. It's uh, upstairs. Oh. Ooh, noisy steps. There's no use trying to keep quiet. Perhaps it won't be necessary. But, Simon, May came to you. Why would she have done that? Dugan's corpse in his store was too hard to explain. Forced her hand. Oh, I see. Oh, it's the second door down, Simon. Mm, that one? Mm-hmm. Oh. My dear girl. Don't you dare girl me. I have a gun, and I know how to use it, too. Of course you do, but why bother? After all, surely we can come to an agreement. Not with you. I don't trust you, so you just Let's stand Let's drop in and say hello, huh? I'll take that gun now. No. I hope we're not intruding. Oh, not at all. Thank you, Mr. Templer. Girl was about to shoot me. I hate being shot messy. No doubt. Well, she looks so innocent, too. You know, I don't like girls who go around murdering people. It gives us such a bad name. Murdering people. Oh. Hey, look, she fainted. Keep away from her. She's faking. I'll take a look at her. And while you do this chair, she's playing... Oh. Hey, Mr. Temple, what's the matter? You didn't like him? Piper? I prefer him unconscious. I don't like men who go around murdering people. Gives the human race such a bad name. Simon. Yes, Wendy? I know Piper killed Dugan and Mr. Bieber, but I, I don't know why. So Piper decided to play Monopoly, Wendy. He wanted all the money for himself. Playing Monopoly is fun, but Piper added murder to it. You see, he arrived at the bookstore out of turn in order to find out where the payoff money was, intending to grab it and disappear. But Dugan was already there, so Piper killed him. But it might have been Mr. Bieber or me who killed Dugan. No, no. Dugan was unarmed. And why did he have to be killed? <laughs> Obviously only to shut his mouth. About what? The fact that his killer had arrived at the bookstore out of turn. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. Except at that time, you didn't know that it couldn't have been me. Oh, but I did know. As I've mentioned on several occasions, you use perfume liberally. Dugan's body was warm when I found him. But there were no traces of perfume in the air. There would have been had you been in the store that recently. Mm-hmm. Simon, 
You know, it's uh, very cold in this room. Oh, I'm sorry. We must wait for the police. Mm, Louie must have found a phone by now. But uh, until they get here... Wendy, the uh, perfume you use, it's taboo, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You like it? Yes, very much. But do you know what taboo means? What, Simon? Among savages, it means out of bounds. Do not touch. Oh, Simon. Who's a savage? You have been listening to another transcribed adventure of The Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. Now here's our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, portrait of an American... Picture of the research scientist dedicated to the destruction of disease. Today, a handful of such specialists have launched a campaign in their laboratory battlefields against the vicious cripplers, arthritis and rheumatism. The organization known as Arthritis is moving against these diseases which have caused such pain in the lives of seven and a half million people. Uppermost in the minds of the men behind this organization are these facts. No one is free from the threat of arthritis and rheumatism. And as yet, scientists have found no specific cure for them. Now the non-profit organization Arthritis has taken the field. The fight against arthritis and rheumatism is on. The fight for the health and well-being of us all. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at this same time for another exciting adventure of the saint. Good night. This adventure of the saint was written by Louis Vitties. In our cast, you heard Gigi Pearson as Wendy and Betty Moran as May. Ted Osborne was Mr. Beaver, Harry Brown, the hotel clerk, Barney Phillips was Peter, and Edmund McDonald, Lieutenant Manelli. Louis is played by Larry Dobkin. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris, is a James L. Sapphire production. Vincent Price is soon to be seen co-starring in RKO's production of His Kind of Woman. All you Saint fans will be glad to know that the Saint comic books are on sale at all newsstands. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. There's fun and adventure for you in your big NBC Sunday evening lineup. For fun, it's the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show with friend Frankie, Brother Willie, and Charming Julius. For adventure, Joel McRae stars in another story of the modern-day Wild West when he portrays Ranger Jace Pearson in Tales of the Texas Rangers. Now stay tuned for Phil Regan's Camp Show, next on NBC.